Guys, I just want to give you a heads up that this is the first chapter that has been edited. It contains sexy stuff that cannot be on the public podcast that runs on YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all of that. The complete episode with all that sexiness in it is in both the audiobook version, which you can purchase from the Wraith Rain shop, and it's in the private member podcast feed, which has the chapters uploaded to stream right from a page on the membership site. So if you sign up to be a Wraith Rain member, you can stream this chapter and a heck of a lot more and it's all unedited. Or if you purchase the audiobook, you get the full audiobook, nothing edited. And as the actor for Julian and Christian says, And let me tell you, it is worth it to get past the paywall. Those scenes are steamy. Last time on Everdark, Balthazar is coming to terms with the fact that he will not be Christian and Julian's master. Christian urges him to see the benefit of being allied with the Vampire King. Balthazar isn't convinced that Damon is who he claims to be. Now we turn back to Julian and Damon as the Vampire King recovers from his dramatic entrance. Everdark, Episode 17 Siren Song. Julian allowed his fingertips to drift over the back of Damon's right hand. The skin was soft. His fingers slid back to the wrist that was surprisingly fine-boned but strong. He couldn't encircle it, though. Damon was large all over. Julian shifted his gaze to Damon's face for the five hundredth time and studied what he saw. The Vampire King's eyelids were still closed. His dark, long lashes fanned against high cheekbones. Damon's skin had a slightly golden cast, though sunlight had never touched it as far as Julian knew. Aversion to sunlight seemed to be one of the myths that were true about vampires, but maybe the Vampire King could withstand sunlight too. Another difference between vampires and immortals. Or maybe to look sunburnished was just another gift the Vampire King had. Damon's jaw was strongly defined, tapering to a well-made chin. His lips were sinfully sensual, and a soft rose color that made Julian think that they might taste sweet. His nose was noble, straight and long. He had a broad, clear forehead that indicated intelligence, but also passion. Julian remembered again how Damon had come into this world, this room, actually smashing through the wall between worlds in the guise of an army of wolves, only to simply overwhelm a powerful vampire like Lord Balthazar Ravenscroft with utter ease. Those were the actions of a passionate man. But is it because he cares so deeply about me? Or did he simply not want something that he considers to be his taken away? Julian believed it was likely the latter. Damon didn't know Julian well enough to care for him. He wasn't upset by this fact, even though he was far more romantic, at least on the outside, than Christian. He wasn't a fool. And yet, I came for you. Julian shivered at those remembered words of Damon's. They held such power, such simple words, yet they meant so much. Julian shut his eyelids and shook his head. What am I doing? I don't know him. I, I hated vampires just yesterday. And here I am wondering if one of them might care for me, half hoping he does. With Julian's eyes closed, his other senses increased, and he could smell his spit-up from earlier on the shirt he wore. His nose wrinkled and he looked down at the ruined clothing. He plucked at it with distaste. I need a shower and a new set of clothes. Christian had already put out some drawstring pants and a long-sleeved shirt that would likely fit him on the bed. Balthazar was about his same size. He knew where the bathroom was from seeing where Balthazar had gone to get him water, but his nose would have led him there in any case. He realized he could smell shampoo and soap quite clearly emanating from the dark doorway opposite the bed. Julian studied Damon's face one last time, wondering if it was safe to leave him, if only for a quick shower. He was still unconscious. There was no change from earlier that he could see. He'll be fine, he told himself. He wouldn't have risked his life just to stop me from drinking from Balthazar. That would be insane. He, he's just tired. Right. Tired. 
The bag of blood was still halfway full and was dripping into the vampire lord's arm, so that wouldn't need to be changed any time soon. Maddie had left them to check on Elena again. He thought of calling her back while he cleaned up. Hopefully she could watch Damon while he bathed. He really couldn't bear the stink of blood any longer. He stood up and found a hand gripping his right wrist. His head snapped towards Damon's face. The Vampire King's glowing red eyes were fixed upon him. You're awake, Julian cried unnecessarily, but he was thrilled it was true. Damon was awake. He really wasn't dying or hurting too badly. At least, that clear, intent gaze didn't show any pain or sickness or weakness at all. Uh, let me call Maddie and- Where were you going? It took Julian a second to register that Damon's lips were not moving and to decipher the meaning of the words. Damon hadn't opened his mouth once. Why don't you speak out loud? Julian asked. One of those elegant, expressive eyebrows rose. It is more efficient speaking mind to mind, is it not? Not really. No one else seems to be able to hear you except me. Julian pointed out. You are the only one I care to speak with in this den of thieves. Damon answered, his eyes hooding. Now, where were you going, fledgling? It was Julian's turn to raise his eyebrows. He let out a startled laugh as he repeated, Den of thieves? I assume you're saying that because Balthazar was going to feed me. But remember, that hand tightened on his wrist. Let us never speak of that again. You will never feed from another master. You will never- Now, hold on! Julian's temper flared. I can feed from who I want to. And considering you're still too weak to feed me now, I'm going to have to feed from someone else, so... Damon was suddenly sitting up. The bag of blood had levitated from the stand where it was dripping into his arm, into his hand. That mouth that had not opened to speak opened to tear the top of the bag off with ease. White fangs flashed as he drank down the entire bag in one gulp. The cooler near the side of the bed that contained more blood packs was suddenly flying to Damon's hand, too. The lid slammed open, and Damon did the same to the half-dozen bags inside as he'd done to the first. His eyes, which had been the color of banked coals before, were glowing like living flames as he finished the last. Julian blinked rapidly. W did you just... I, I suppose after the wolf thing that I, I shouldn't be surprised that you can move things with your mind, too, but fucking hell. It's like you use the force, or... Damon's hand was under his chin, cutting off his flow of words. It was not a violent touch. It was incredibly gentle. The touch told Julian that he was treasured. He met those burning eyes. You will only feed from me. Damon's mind voice was quiet. If you're strong enough. Julian answered just as quietly, but with as much force. I'm not putting you in danger again. You can't make me do that. Are we clear? Damon finally inclined his head, breaking the stare down that had unconsciously been occurring between them, and he released Julian's chin. The loss of that touch felt strange, almost as if something was missing. Agreed, the Vampire King said. You... you agree? Just like that. Julian had expected a fight. I respect your desire to... to protect me. Not that it is necessary, the Vampire King said. We need to get more blood. He made a face as he looked at the scattered bags on the bed. From a person. Not... not these contrivances. Yeah, I thought they were pretty gross too. Julian agreed. I am sure you did find them quite unappetizing. You are too young to be drinking from anyone but me, even if I was inclined to allow it, Damon explained. Julian shook his head as another flare of irritation lit up in his chest like a match being struck. Just when I think we're starting to understand one another, you're making proclamations again. You are my fledgling. I am both your master and your king. Making proclamations is what I do. Damon's plush lips were curled into a surprisingly endearing smile. The irritation died away as quickly as it had sprung up, and Julian found himself smiling back. Well, just so you're aware that what I do is go my own way. I'll follow yours if it makes sense, but nobody rules me. I bow to no king. You'll have to earn my respect, just like anyone else. In fact, it'll be far harder for you, because you're actually demanding fealty. 
I will take that as a challenge, Damon answered, still smiling and appearing more pleased. It is good that you have fire in you. My fledgling should be strong in both mind and body, intelligent and beautiful. Julian found himself coloring, caught completely off guard by this compliment. Ah, uh, well, compared to you, I look like leftovers, but okay. Damon looked at Julian through those dark, long lashes. I look forward to showing you just how beautiful I find you. Julian was stunned at the comment once more. Heat, though, flared in between his legs. Damon was probably the most beautiful person he'd ever met, but he also had a strength and power that Julian hadn't been exposed to before. He was used to being the one stronger than his partner. The thought of being pursued by someone who topped him in all ways, or at least wanted to, was a surprising thrill. Before Julian could respond to the blatant flirting, the Vampire King was speaking again. But first, you were thinking of going somewhere when you thought I was sleeping. It must have been important for you to leave, as you have been a very keen watcher. I wanted to make sure you were okay, Julian admitted. That act had his shirt ruffling and the scent of vomit rising up from the material. His nose wrinkled again. But I stink to high heaven. I, I want a shower and change. He gestured to the clothes on the bed. Damon picked up the shirt and sniffed it. A frown crossed his handsome features. Well, what's wrong? It smells like him. Damon was holding the offending garment with two fingers as if it stunk. You mean like Balthazar? Well, yeah, those are his clothes. Mine are back at the house. He answered and reached for the offending garment. Damon kept it just out of his reach, still frowning. I do not like for you to smell of him. Yeah, well, he and I are the same size, and I don't want to smell like vomit any longer. So you're going to have to deal. Julian yanked the shirt from Damon's hand and grabbed the pants before the Vampire King decided that those offended him too. He will think you are showing him favor by wearing his things. Damon was still frowning. Balthazar can think what he likes, though I am not showing him favor by borrowing a shirt and pants. I'm grateful he turned Christian and for his help. Did you see what he did in the Seer and Blood Den? He didn't have to come get me, but he did. Julian reminded him. He wished you for himself, a pair of beauties. Do not think he acted out of charity. Damon waved away Balthazar's actions as if they were nothing. Julian found that unfair. You're probably right on one level, but I think you're judging him a lot more harshly than you would have if he hadn't been trying to feed me, per my request, remember? Julian said, I am his king. The other, the big one, understood that immediately. Balthazar had no thought of the offense he would be giving me by his wrongful actions. The Vampire King's eyes blazed. Arceus is a priest, though. He's big into faith, I think. Balthazar didn't believe you even existed, Julian said. He just thought you were some old vampire who abandoned me. He really didn't, maybe even doesn't think you're the daemon in all the stories. The Vampire King slid his legs off the bed and appeared to be contemplating standing. Julian felt a twinge of worry that he would not be strong enough. But then, Damon got up gracefully without a quiver. What do you mean does not believe I exist? Julian had to look up to see Damon's face. His chin only came to Damon's shoulder. It was a little unnerving how big the Vampire King was. But his physical prowess seemed to be nothing compared to the things he could do without moving a muscle. Julian scrubbed the back of his head as he realized the minefield he'd likely just walked into. Hey guys, if you're thinking of subscribing to WraithRain.com just for the uncut podcast chapters, there's so much more to the membership. Most of what I do are written stories. So since 2010, 12 years ago, I can't even believe it, I've had my own serial subscription site. I have three or four stories that are currently running and I update those with three or four chapters every month a piece. In fact, the sequel to Everdark is in one of the stories I'm updating right now. Once a story is done, it's left on the site as part of the archive. There are over 12 years of completed serials between 150,000 words for a short one and over 500,000 words for a longer one like Everdark. I hope you check it out. Remember, you can get the complete, uncut, unedited, 
multiple sexy times ever dark chapters if you are a member of Wraith Reign. Sophia had told him the tragic history of the immortals and the vampires in a dispassionate way, and while parts had been terrible to hear, they weren't personal to him. The other ten immortals hadn't been his friends and confidants. They hadn't been the people he had relied upon to feed him. Again, one of those hands was beneath his chin. A connection, or rather a greater connection, when their skin touched was created. Julian felt a zing of electricity go through him that seemed to short-circuit his thoughts. You do not wish to tell me something. Damon studied his face minutely. No, I don't, because I have some bad news. Julian answered truthfully with a sigh. I'm not even sure how to begin. The other immortals, I do not sense them. Their cities are on lockdown, Damon muttered, as if to himself more than to Julian. And they had not come to Night Valen for some time. They would not abandon me unless they were unable to come to my side. What have you heard of their fate? There was an uprising, Julian explained. Some, or maybe even all the immortals, were killed. He then repeated all he had heard from Sophia Strange. After he was done, long moments ticked by while Damon stared down at him, unblinking. Julian had no idea what he was thinking. Perhaps he had made a mistake telling him all of this when he was still weak. But then Damon was moving again like normal. No, immortals do not die, Damon denied. Not like you are thinking. But perhaps their coils were slain. Are they reincarnated? Balthazar is said to be Iros reborn. Julian remarked and immediately regretted it. Complimenting the vampire lord seemed to raise Damon's ire. Not that I think this, but— He thinks this. Damon grunted in mirthless amusement. He dreams of it, I am sure. He's pretty powerful. Not as powerful as you, but he was able to save everybody here from a crazy master and has survived in exile, so he's got something going on for sure. Julian pointed out, not sure why he was defending Balthazar so much. Maybe it was because he was Christian's master, and that meant Damon and him needed to get along. He killed his master. Damon's eyebrows rose. It was warranted. The guy was hurting everyone in his house, beating them, starving them. I'm certain that Balthazar is telling the truth about that. Considering that others came with him into exile instead of staying in Everdark, sounds like he can generate some loyalty. Damon's brow clouded. He must be... No, his master must have simply been weak. I do not believe... But the Vampire King looked thoughtful, and not so inclined to judge Balthazar badly at that moment anyways. I just hope that Balthazar doesn't speak a lot near him, Julian thought. That might wipe away all the good I just did. Hey, I'm going to quickly shower, and then we can get you more blood. If you want to lay down again for a moment. Before Julian could finish his sentence, Damon was striding towards the bathroom door. There is a bathing area here. Um, yeah. Julian had to practically jog to keep up with him. Let me turn on the lights. No need. There are candles. Yeah, but... The candles suddenly burst into flame. They were placed strategically around the bathroom and gave off plenty of light to cast the large room in a golden glow. Julian wasn't surprised to see that the room was plush. Balthazar seemed like the kind of person to have the best of everything. He also seemed as if he enjoyed being incredibly clean. There was a walk-in shower with rain showerhead, but also jets on every wall but the one made of glass. There was also a huge claw-footed tub. There was a vast vanity, lined with colognes and lotions, with a seashell-shaped sink set into the very porcelain. Julian set the shirt and pants there. There was also a toilet and separate bidet. So vampires do go to the bathroom. Wow. Okay. Did not expect that. Or maybe this is for his human guests. Damon was staring at the toilet and bidet with interest. Julian stepped over to him. Those are used for, uh, well, when, when you go to the bathroom. Realizing that likely meant nothing to Damon as it was a euphemism, he explained haltingly, Humans, uh, you know that they excrete waste, and, well, these are to remove the waste from the home to the sewer system. This one here? He gestured to the bidet. Helps to, uh, clean their, um excreting parts. Yes, 
This is a similar system to what we have. Really? There are toilets in Nightvalen? Damon did not answer. Instead, he pushed the metal handle for the toilet and watched the water swirl down the bottom. He did it again, and again, and again. Julian was reminded of a cat as Damon's eyes flickered along with the water. It flushes into the sewers, see? Julian dropped a piece of toilet paper into the water and both of them watched as it swirled away. Damon grabbed one of the cut glass bottles of cologne and was about to drop that into the toilet when Julian quickly took it from him. Don't do that. It would get stuck and water would overflow. It just wouldn't be good. He finished when Damon continued to look at him without blinking. Do you suppose losing that cologne would displease Balthazar? There was a curious little glint in Damon's eye that made Julian nervous. It would, and that's why we're not going to mess with his stuff. Julian replied firmly. He set the bottle back where Damon had taken it from. Damon shrugged, as if it didn't matter. He then shocked Julian by pulling off the tank cover of the toilet. Whoa, what, what are you doing now? Julian tried to get him to put it down, but that was unsuccessful. Damon flushed the toilet again and watched as the water in the tank drained into the bowl. The Vampire King mentally grunted and replaced the tank cover, satisfied that he understood how it worked, at least in part. He then pressed the button on the bidet that sent a stream of water shooting up into the air. One would sit on this, I take it? Yep. Quite ingenious. You think bathrooms are cool? I can't wait to show you computers and all the rest. Julian suddenly realized that Damon had a mountain of things to learn. From modern plumbing, to cars, to planes, to the internet, how would the Vampire King react to a world that was nothing like the one he'd left? His curiosity was a good thing. It indicated an elasticity of mind. He also wasn't afraid of anything. In fact, Damon was now over by the sink. Damon turned the handles and watched as hot and cold water sprayed into the seashell-shaped sink. Before Julian had a chance to even move, the Vampire King was checking out the glass-enclosed shower. The bathtub had barely warranted a glance, probably because he recognized what it was. He was opening the shower door, stepping inside and reaching for the faucet handles again before Julian saved him from being sprayed in the face. Hey, do you want to get wet? The water will come out of there, there, and there. He pointed to the nozzles. Damon stepped out of the shower and watched as Julian adjusted all the knobs, and water spurted out everywhere. He got the sleeve of his shirt wet, but it didn't matter, because he was already going to change out of this one anyways. He tested the water with his fingers and adjusted it until it was the right temperature. At least, what he liked anyways. How about if I shower first, and then if you'd like to try it, you can. Why do we not bathe together? The next section of the podcast has been edited out to keep it suitable for a general audience. To get the full version, either subscribe to Wraith Rain as a member, or buy the audiobook from the Wraith Rain shop. The Everdark Podcast by X Aratare is performed by Edward Fox, Adam Riley, Jay Thelis, Bruno Devant, Kelly Michaels, and Hannah Hart, and Liz Gentle as Seer. Edited by Matthew Prince. Continuity by Adriel Wiggins. Everdark is produced by Wraith Rain Publishing in association with Her Grace Reads Studios. Copyright 2022 by Wraith Rain Publishing.